five. And remember, Shino Fuji can win this tournament if he wins this match. You'll get a chance here to see Shino Fuji's combination of speed and power against the larger man. Shino Fuji immediately gets inside, grabs the belt, and drives Kotokazi out of the ring. And there's your winner. You know, Jeff, he'd make a pretty good nose tackle in the NFL. He moves well. Yes, he's got explosive power off the start and good wrestling skills to maintain inside position. That means that Shino Fuji has wrapped up the tournament, but the next question is whether he'll be able to go undefeated in this Basho. A perfect record in the maiden tournament in this brand new Kokugi Khan would be a great honor. The opening ceremonies just completed. Great ritual and blessing the dojo. Some of it going back to the sports origin 2,500 years ago. It is a modern facility. It costs $40 million. It can be used for other events, but primarily, it is the home for sumo. A seating capacity of 13,000. And we've got a full house today for this opening basho. Ready now for our next bout. That is Ozutsu. He weighs 320 pounds, and his opponent is Tagaru, a little guy at 304. They've met four times and split, two and two. These wrestlers, you know, have reached this level after years of apprenticeship in a sumo stable, serving the older wrestlers, dedicating their lives to this sport, all for this moment. Neither wrestler gained an advantage at the start. They're now locked on each other's belts. Tagaru's got Ozutsu back to the edge of the ring. He's almost got him. Oh, and Ozutsu fights off. They're both waiting to counter again. Tagaru's lifting, pushing, and he gets Ozutsu out of the ring. And there you have it, the winner right there, Tagaru, who earned his money in that match. And by sumo standards, that was a marathon. Getting set, Konishki, the huge American, 475 pounds. His opponent is Koboyama. I want to make a couple of quick points about Konishki. He entered sumo only two and a half years ago, brought in by Jesse Takameyama, the great American hero here in Japan. But some feel that his rise has been too rapid to fully appreciate the spirit of sumo, and that has prompted some negative reaction. And Jeff, it didn't last long. Kanishki made fast work of that match, straightened his opponent up and pushed him right out of bounds using hand slaps. As we mentioned earlier, Konishki is not having a particularly good tournament. His record now is five and nine, but he has done well recently and has moved up quickly in the standings. He's an accomplished musician and a very bright guy if you spend any time talking to him. And here you see off the start, Konishki with that head jarring contact straightens Kobayama up and then uses those hand slaps to drive him backwards and out of the ring. And there's no question that at nearly a quarter of a ton, Konishki is an intimidating sight. And coming up in our next bout, Asahi Fuji against Iwanahana. Iwanahana at 10 and 3 trying to lock in second place. Now during this bout, listen for the referee. He is not shouting warnings. He is shouting encouragement. Both wrestlers locked on each other's belt. Duanahana has a little advantage. He drives him to the edge, but Asai Fuji fights back to the middle. Both wrestlers looking for that opportunity. Oh, and a wonderful throw by Duanahana. Airtime. That's remnants of Greco-Roman wrestling right there. That was a real pretty hip throw, Bill. And Tewanahana at 273 pounds, small by comparison, has the inside track on second place, waiting in the wings, and who has already locked up this tournament, Shino Fuji, now looking to go undefeated. Japan, one of the true legends in this sport is ironically an American, Jesse Takameyama. Like Konishki, Hawaiian born, and when Takameyama fought, the Japanese loved to shout his name. Jesse became so popular here, he even made commercials. Jesse, now a Japanese citizen, retired after 20 years in the sport, a ceremony in which the sumo warrior loses his top knot of hair. 
And while Jesse felt the emotion of the moment, he reflected on his long career in a foreign land. 21 years of, as I said, hardship, 20, 21 years of fun, traveling together, being, being together, and winning my first championship. Uh, the first foreigner to ever win a championship. Do you anticipate any other Americans following in your footsteps? Kids enter the world of Samoa, and only two of them succeed in going up in ranks in Samoa. One of them is me, and the other is uh, Konishki. We, we both succeeded. So for a foreigner to enter Samoa is very, the odds of succeeding is very difficult. Your vocal cords were injured during a sumo match. You once said that you'd like to get it repaired. Do you still feel that way? I've been to a lot of doctors, specialists, military specialists here in Japan, American military specialists, and from the Japanese specialists. And they told me the only way I can get my voice back is uh, through surgery. But since I made this voice famous, Oh, I think I should, maybe should keep it. Jesse Takamayama, he'll be missed. And we're ready to resume now our next bout. Hoshi, eight and five in this basho. He is an up and coming young sumo fighter against Korinji on the left side, also eight and five. And these are two very popular wrestlers. Both wrestlers came out slapping, but Hoshi, in a smart maneuver, ducked down, grabbed the belt, and drove Korinji out of the ring. And unlike the type of wrestling Americans may be used to, this one doesn't require too much endurance. Short, powerful tactics are needed here. No one will be too specific, but from what we've been able to gather, there is an incident in their past that has made this a bitter rivalry. Also, Chino Fuji doesn't lose often, and Hotenyu, as Jeff mentioned, holds a 10-9 lead in their bouts, and there they go. Both wrestlers neutralized each other's start. They're now looking for inside position by grabbing for the belts. They're looking to initiate or perhaps counter each other here. Oh, and look at the power in Chiano Fuji. He just picked Huck Tenyu up and carried him right out of the ring. So Chiano Fuji wins. He is 14 and 0 and one victory away from a perfect basho. You know, the differences in culture between East and West can be illustrated by something as simple as eating out at a restaurant. Yes, the Japanese are more visually graphic. As opposed to the United States and reading a menu, the Japanese show you the prepared meals, beverages, and desserts. Now, that stuff looks pretty good, except it's all made of plastic. And it's made here in a factory about an hour outside of Tokyo by the Sudo Company. The pseudo company has been making replicas of restaurant dishes for 65 years. The process begins when a restaurant sends in photos of the various dishes they want produced. Then plastic resin is mixed and poured into molds. The pseudo company used to use wax, and then 25 years ago, they switched to synthetics. The plastic food comes out of the oven and then is hand-painted. They put a glazed coating on the food to enhance the appearance. 10,000 restaurants use these many works of art to attract customers. Each piece of food costs between $20 and $50, somewhere around 5,000 to 10,000 yen. We get back to business. Our next bout, Matawi Zumi at 10 and 4 against Al Bajo. Matawi Zumi trying for second place, but he's not been able to beat Al Bajo, who is six and eight. They've met twice. There was good contact, but they're both reaching for belts here. Matawi Zumi, oh, Al Bajo trying to hip toss Matawi Zumi. Matawi Zumi keeps backing him up. Good balance by the big man there, and Matawazumi pushes him out of the ring. <laughs> and you see one of the perils of getting a good seat for Sumo. The threat of a man who weighs 446 pounds and another man who weighs 324 falling down on top of you. Here's the replay. 
they both have each other's belts here. And you can see Mikawazumi driving into him, and Abajo keeps trying to redirect that force sideways by throwing. But in the end, Mikawazumi's power straight forward drives Abajo and himself into the crowd. Now, we're going to get one last look at Konishki, the huge American, his final bow to this Basho. And I want to get back to a point we were making earlier. As you look at Konishki's opponent, Toshi Sarugi, in addition to resentment because of Konishki's rapid rise, there is also resentment because he is an American. In fact, some people put a curse on Konishki prior to this tournament because if he did well, the doyo would weep tears. The doyo, of course, is the ring, and they're underway. Both men here come out slapping. I think this is in favor of the bigger Konishki. It looked like Tochi Surugi tried to foot sweep or kick the legs out from under Konishki, but in the end, the big man is able to slap and push his opponent out of the ring again. And Jeff, I think that bout probably best exemplifies that size can be a positive factor. Well, obviously, Konishki, when he's driving you forward and you're backing up, is in the driver's seat. We didn't want to give you the impression that Konishki is not a popular fellow. He's extremely popular here, but there are those traditionalists, as you watch the replay, who do resent his success. There you see Tocha Surugi trying that foot sweep and missing, and at this point, Konishki starts that slapping, and as you can see by the face of Tochi Surugi, it is not the position you want to be in. Down he goes. And he takes a seat right down in the front row. Up next, a very popular Hoshi who comes in at nine and five. He's there on the right. And his opponent, Jingaku, who will move up in the standings regardless of what happens. He's got eight wins. He is eight and six. But remember, even though Chinofuji has the tournament wrapped up, the men have a lot at stake here. A win means they move up in the rankings. Both men came out slapping hard. Hoshi's staying low, trying to reach for the belt. Jingaku again is still trying to. Oh, Hoshi's got him by the throat and backs him up close. Jingaku is driving Hoshi back, and oh, oh my! Hoshi took that force and redirected it with a left side arm throw and threw Jingaku out of the ring. Another marathon match by sumo standards. Hoshi wins, and he'll finish up the tournament at 10 and 5. As you look at a close up of the man who is rapidly becoming a sumo legend. Jino Fuji, can he go undefeated? We'll find out. And there's Wakasumazu. These are two of the best wrestlers currently competing in sumo. There was talk last year that the next Yokozuna or Grand Champion, as you look at Chino Fuji staring right back at Wakasumazu, that the next Grand Champion would be Wakasumazu. But then he had a couple of poor showings, and now he has to work his way back up the ladder. This, of course, is the pre-match ceremony. This gets everybody in the arena fired up. They stare each other down. They show they have no weapons. And they stamp their feet. They're stamping out the evil spirits. They throw salt to cleanse the dohyo, and that protects them from injury. They have four minutes to get through all of this. Listen to the crowd. Even though he has already won the tournament, there is great pressure on Chino Fuji to go through this initial basho at this brand new Kokugi Khan undefeated. There's Wakasumazu and the referee. He carries a dagger. If he makes a mistake, tradition holds that he should commit suicide. And I know a lot of Major League managers who think that would be a great idea for umpires. They're underway. Both wrestlers going for inside position. Wakashimazu had it. Chiano Fuji gets back inside and he's grabbing the belt. And there you can see by popping his hips, he can lift Wakashimazu easily and carry him out of the ring. Chiano Fuji is a very, very powerful wrestler. And in addition, he seems to be extremely smart. So Chino Fuji has done it. He has gone through this Basho undefeated 15 and 0, and he will have a place in the history of this brand new Kokugi Khan. And Jeffrey, Chino Fuji is a good example of the modern day sumo wrestler. He is not a fat man. He is extremely strong and well proportioned and doesn't rely on mass alone. 
In addition to understanding strategy and techniques, Chiano Fuji has broken traditional training methods and applied modern sports science. He's an avid weight trainer, and as you can see here, it's paid off. Once he has that inside position, by popping his hips, it's very easy for him to lift Wakashimazu and carry him out of the ring. So Chiano Fuji is our champion at 15 and 0, a three-way tie for second place at 11 and 4 between Dewana Hana, Hok Tenyu, and Matao Azumi, Hoshi and Katao at 10 and 5. For Jeff Blatnick, I'm Bill McAtee. Sayonara from Tokyo, Japan. I'll be back. I'll be back.